You are watching Just Motivation. No matter what illness you have, if you use the ideas I am about to share with you, your health is sure to get better. I once heard a definition of health that I thought was very clear. Good health means you don't get tired, have a good appetite, go to sleep and wake up easily, have a good memory, are funny, and can think and act clearly, not being clumsy, being truthful, modest, thankful, and loving. What is the state of your health right now? People need to realize that their own mental patterns are always creating their own life experiences, both the good ones and the ones they think are bad. The same mental patterns also affect how their bodies feel, both when they are at ease and when they are not. We don't like being sick, but we need every illness we have. It is the body's way of letting us know that we are thinking incorrectly. People keep telling us that we're going in the wrong direction and that we need to change the way we think. But every sickness can teach us something. Please don't just complain. I want this problem to go away. You won't get the healing you want from it. You won't learn what you need to learn either. This is not the time to judge or make people feel worse. We're just looking at what needs to be released. Now is the time to heal and make our lives and bodies whole again. I know you already have everything you need to do this. Once you start to understand how this works, you can take charge of the changes you want to make in your lives. This is a very exciting process that turns into one of the most important adventures of our life. I think that each of us has a place where we hold wisdom, and when we are ready to change our lives for the better, we bring into our lives what we need to help us. Just the fact that you found this video means that you are already on your way to healing. Something has changed inside of you, and you are already starting to feel better. You might even tell yourself that right now. I've already started to feel better. The way we treat our bodies shows what we think and believe on the inside. If we take the time to listen, the body is always telling us something. Every cell in your body responds to every thought and word you have. Continuous ways of thinking and talking cause body movements, postures, and feelings of ease or discomfort. A person with a permanently angry face didn't get that way by thinking happy thoughts. Older people's faces show so clearly what they've been thinking about all their lives. How do you think you'll look when you're old? You see, I think it's our birthright to be completely healthy and happy in every part of our lives. I want to help you right now claim this birth. Some of the things I'm going to tell you may seem very easy, but these ideas have been tried out many times and worked very well. In fact, they do work. Just take a deep breath. And if you can, make sure you're comfortable while you listen to this video. Just take these thoughts in. You will only agree with ideas that make sense for you, no matter if you understand all of them or not, or if you understand them right now. Just play this video over and over again. Even if you are not paying attention to the words, your subconscious mind will hear and store whatever you need. I think that everyone makes their own health problems. We don't say, I want to get this disease, but we create an environment in our minds where this disease can grow and thrive. Every cell in our bodies responds to what we say to ourselves in our minds. I recently heard a doctor say that if a surgeon operates on a patient without doing anything to help the patient change the cause of the disease, then all the surgeon is doing is extending the patient's life until the patient gets another disease. We can't just treat the symptoms. We have to get rid of what's causing the disease. And to do that, we have to look inside ourselves to find where the process of getting sick started. I think that we are all 100% responsible for everything that happens to us, good and bad. We all make our own lives through the thoughts and words we think and say. The universe totally backs up what we say to ourselves. You can say it either way. Whatever we choose to believe, our subconscious mind accepts as true. Both of these things mean that what I think about myself, the words comes to be true for me. What you think about yourself and your life is what comes true for you. And there are no limits to what we can think. When we are very young, we learn how to feel about ourselves and about life by watching how the adults around us act. We learn what to think about ourselves and about life through it. Now, if you lived with scared or unhappy people, you may have learned a lot of bad things about yourself and life, and you may still believe them. But that doesn't mean we should blame our parents, because we're all victims, 
and they couldn't have taught us anything they didn't know. If your mother didn't know how to love herself, or if your father didn't know how to be gentle and kind, they couldn't teach you how to love yourself or how to be gentle and kind. Your parents did the best they could with the things they had learned as kids. I also think that we choose our parents and that each of us chooses to be born at a certain place and time on earth. I think we do these things because we chose to come to this world to learn a certain lesson that will help us grow spiritually. We pick our gender, our skin color, and our country. Then we look for the parents who will mirror the pattern we want to work on in this life. When we get older, we often point the finger at our parents and say, you made me do it. But really, we chose them because they were perfect for what we wanted to work on getting past. We learn our beliefs when we are very young, and then as we go through life, we have experiences that fit our beliefs. Think about your own past, and think about how many times you've been through the same things. Well, I think you kept having those same experiences because they match something you thought was true about yourself. It doesn't really matter how long a problem has been going on, how big it is, or how dangerous it is. The moment you're in is always where the power is. This means that everything you have experienced up to this point in your life is a result of what you have thought and believed in the past. But what you choose to think, believe, and say today, right here and right now, is what will happen in the future. The way you talk to yourself now affects tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, etc. Think about what you are thinking right now. Do you want this idea to shape your future? Is it a bad thing or a good thing? Just pay attention and notice. I am not trying to make anyone feel bad or make anyone else seem wrong. I'm letting you know what's going on inside you. Many of us who get sick or hurt are actually completely unaware of what's going on in our minds and bodies. We only pay attention to our bodies when we are sick or in pain. If we don't know what's going on inside us, we can't change it. How can we ever change? No matter what the problem is, all we have to deal with is a thought, and a thought can be changed. All our experiences are just outer effects of our inner dialogue. Even hating yourself is just hating what you think about yourself. You might be thinking that I am a bad person. This thought makes you feel something, and you believe what you feel to be true. But if you get rid of the thought, you won't feel that way. Thoughts are not set in stone. If you change the way you think, the feeling will go away. Whether you believe it or not, we do choose what we think. We might have the same thought over and over again so often that it might not seem like we're choosing it, but we did choose the first one. We can choose not to think about some things. Look at how many times you have chosen not to think well of yourself. Well, you can also choose not to think something bad about yourself. I feel like everyone I know or have worked with on this planet has some level of self-hatred and feelings of guilt. The more we hate ourselves and feel bad about ourselves, the less our lives work. We don't know how to speak up for ourselves, and we always try to make other people happy. Or we might always be angry and prone to fights. The less we hate ourselves and feel guilty, the better our lives are in every way. This includes the health of the body and the feeling that I'm not good enough. This has been my experience with everyone I've worked with. We often add, I don't do enough or I don't deserve it to this. Do you sound like this? All we say, imply, or feel is that you're not good enough. Who is it for? And based on whose criteria? Now, if you really believe these bad things, how can you make your life loving, joyful, successful, and healthy? Somehow, your subconscious beliefs would always go against these goals, making it impossible for you to reach them. I think that more than anything else, it's anger, criticism, guilt, and fear that make our bodies and lives worse. When we blame others and don't take responsibility for our own lives, we feel this way. You see, if we are all 100% responsible for everything that happens in our lives, then there is no one to blame but ourselves. This has been just motivation.